Hey developers, today we are going to look at Dino again. I'm gonna answer you guys' common questions about it from my last video, and I'm gonna give you an overall update, and we're gonna even look at some more code examples of Dino. So make sure you watch all the way to the end and you can learn all about it. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I've written several books. I'm also done hundreds of videos on JavaScript, especially Node, Vue, React. If you guys are interested in those topics, make sure you click that subscribe button at the bottom and click that bell button that really helps me and also leave a comment throughout this video i'm going to talk about some things about dino if you disagree or you just want to add your two cents leave a comment i really appreciate it that will help me and also i'll leave in the link in the description if you there's a link to to get the first chapter of my book if you guys are interested in vue.js or javascript you can click on that link and sign up and I will let you know when videos come out. So let's talk about Dino. So first I wanna thank everyone that has watched my previous video. Uh, it's actually gotten you know thousands and thousands of views. I've had hundreds of comments. I've tried to answer as many of them as I can, but instead of trying to answer each individual one, I created this presentation of the five questions I'm getting the most and also uh, a few corrections. So I want to go ahead and explain those those things to you now and right now um, as we continue on. And then maybe after this, I'll jump out of this and I'll show you guys some code and also the YouTube video itself. And I don't have time to thank everyone that was really so kind, who left really awesome comments, but I really appreciate it. You know, I really like it when people comment and, uh, you know, tell me if I'm wrong, right, or their, their experiences with Dino. And that was really awesome that I heard so many people talk about this. And a lot of people are really positive, which was great. So first, you may have been noticing I'm calling it Dino and not Deno. That was one thing that a lot of people had mentioned in the comments is that I was mispronouncing Dino. So I went back through uh, several different talks that Ryan Dahl did, and it was funny. Uh, from four months ago, he was pronouncing Dino, Deno, D-E-H, kind of like Deno, like eh at the middle. However, sometime after four months ago in one of his talks I saw, he started calling it Dino and he said he kind of changed the name because it's like dinosaur and that was, you know, this this guy right here is supposed to be a dinosaur. So Dino, Dino, D D Dinosaur, so Dino. So I'm calling it Dino now. I apologize from the last video for those of you who have corrected me on the pronunciation, but uh, it is Dino. So there you go. Another really common question I'm getting is, can you use NPM modules? And there was a, a little bit of discuss and debate in the comments about this in my last video. The, the truth of the matter is, is that yes, you can use NPM modules, but with a caveat that they cannot have like require, they can't be specific types in there. So it requires ES modules uh, to work. So for those of you thinking that Dino would have to have a whole new package manager and you can only use that standard library that I showed you guys. That's not true. You can use a standard library. There's already a third party library that's included in the, the Dino.land website that they recommend that you can use. They aren't as vetted as the standard library, but you can also even go beyond those two and just find ES modules or packages that are in a certain ES module. Um, it, you can basically import it using ES modules and you can use that inside your app. Now I'm going to show you after this presentation, but there is a website called pika.dev, which a lot of people in the Dino community are recommending if you want to look at packages. So I went ahead and looked at a one of my favorite packages called Lodash, and I found a Lodash-ES version, which uses ES modules, and I was able to put that into a actual app. And I was able to import stuff in, and it worked with Dino, and it downloaded everything fine. So I wanted to show you guys that too. It's also worth mentioning too, a lot of people are saying that since there we have this imports in with URLs that you have to have an always on internet connection and that's not true at all either. You don't have to have an online internet connection because what happens is you put you can put the location of, you can download those modules and put them anywhere in your hard drive and then put the path in when you do your imports. You can also have the a location be some website or dino.land and then it downloads it into a local cache that you don't get to see but you can change whatever directory you want to install it in and then from then on it will use that cache every time it needs to grab uh, the dependencies in any apps that you run on that 
on that computer. So that way you're not constantly going to out to the internet to download everything into, uh, into your app. So it only does it the first time. So no, you don't need to have an always on internet connection to work, but I don't think this is any different than package. If you're using like a package JSON, which we're not going to, and obviously Dino, but if you had a package.json, the first time you download everything, it downloads it all into the notes modules folder. Um, this one's just a little different because it has like a global cache that all the apps use. So we're gonna look at pika.dev in a little bit. So some couple people mentioned this. If you notice, if you were eagle eye during my video, and I'll make sure I link the video, you notice that I went to the bash profile and up and added in the uh, the installation for uh, Dino, and it had me put the path in and also where the location of the Dino binaries was, so that way I can run it on the command line. But you may have noticed that the prompt was Zish. So I'm actually using Z shell or, or Zish actually. And so that I have a Zish profile file, which I, after the video was done, I went ahead and copied that instead of, instead of my bash profile into the Zish profile. So that way uh, it was there. And actually I use oh my, oh my Zish, I believe. So good call for people who mentioned it in the comments. You're absolutely right. I did put in the bash profile. That's what probably 90% of you probably using the default profile. And if you've just upgraded to the latest version of Mac OS, I hear there's an actual issue. I haven't done it yet. But yeah, that's normally you put in the bash profile, but otherwise you put it in whatever uh, shell program you're using on your computer. So I did that. There's also another um, thing to keep in mind. I told you guys in the last video that you can uh, await everywhere, uh, but basically await works only in the top level await. So if you have multiple functions, you still have to um, put the async symbol in your functions. Um, that way, anything inside that function will it'll know it's asynchronous. I'll show you guys an example of that uh, again here in a moment, but it's worth noting that you do have to uh, it only works on the top level. You don't. If you have multiple levels, you still have to actually put and and declare it as asynchronous. And also, I didn't really make this clear in the video, but some people are wondering what the final release date is. As of May 9th, RC2 came out. Uh, now we are expecting on May 13th for the final release to be out. I don't know if it's going to be exactly that date or if it'll be pushed back, but they're very very re close to releasing. Uh, 1.0 and actually I said RC1 here but RC2 is out that's what I meant RC2 came out so they're very very close for a final release date so stay tuned on that they're very 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 close okay so let's look at a demo one more time okay so here is the app that I wanted to show you guys first as I was saying I had to put the async right here even though we know that uh, asynchronous is uh, Kind of built in but it's only built in the top level so you see this await here um you don't have to actually uh you don't actually have to um it, it, it's able to do this because it's promise aware the asynchronous is only for the top level so you don't have to wrap this in some async function so this definitely works but if, since we have this callback function after the app.use you still have to wrap this in async here and that's just part of of Dino. So that was the first question some people mentioned. Another one, uh, Lodash. So I wanted to see if I can get Lodash working and it works fine. So this is uh, pika.dev. I copied this path here. I actually extracted flatten out and I was able to do flatten. So if I run, if I do Dino run and then this name of this one, you see there, it just worked as fine. I just have the console log and it did this flatten here, um, which it, which worked, which is great. So I just wanted to show how that worked and uh, that this you can actually extract things out of Lodash like this. Now I wanna show you guys pika.dev. Okay, so here is pika.dev and what's cool is you can just look up packages to see if they have uh, normal ESM imports. So like for example, I typed in Lodash here and then I said, I says right here, I have an exact match, but it has no web optimized module entry point found in the package.json. But this Lodash ES does, because it does ES modules. And here's the import right here. I can just grab and copy in this. And the first time I run it, it, it installs this locally on my cache and hard drive. And that's perfect. So I could just look up any package if I wanted to. Uh, I don't know. 
Is there like an ES module version of jQuery? I don't think so. But I don't know, maybe I'm doing like image viewer. Uh, here's an import for it. So yeah, you can see that definitely there's there's ways of getting your favorite packages. Um, obviously, they don't have everything, but it, that's one way of doing it. And you may run into issues. Uh, maybe I'll do another video. Someone actually was able to get Preact working really well, which is really neat. You can do Preact right here. Um, so you can do ES module imports through there, which is nice. Uh, also, if you go to dino.land, land, if I can type it in right, you can see right down here they have this third party modules. And so here's ones that, uh, these are, this is code hosting service for Dino scripts. It's pretty standard right now, but you can try to look through here to see if there's some package that you want. Does it have Lodash in here? I wonder if it even listed. Yeah, so here's Lodash and Lodash require. Um, so you can actually get Lodash this way as well. I did it through Pika, but it looks like you can get it through this third party library and you would just import it in. All right, cool. So I, I just want to go over those things real quickly with you guys. Let me know what you th think in the comments below. This was obviously a very quick video, but I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe if you guys like more information on Dino. Take care.